Hi, hello, hi. Before we get into this video, there's just something I want to say. As some of you may know, I was sent an STP from Real Magic a couple months ago, and I was sent this prosthetic to review on the podcast with Chase. He already had an STP from them, and I had his consent to ask them for one. He seemed really on board with it, and once the prosthetic arrived, he was actually quite angry and jealous, and we never got to make that review, and it reflected very badly on me and kind of burned that bridge between me and that company ever getting a chance to work together. I am still a very big fan of this company's work. I still want to make a review video for this STP because it is the only STP that's ever worked for me. But I just wanted to say that because I think it's important. They took a chance on me by sending me this product for free. And not being able to make that review kind of sent the message to them that I'm not reliable or that I don't care or all of the above. And it's unfortunate that that happened. And I may not have the power to go back and forcefully make a podcast, but I can absolutely make this review on my channel. And it might not make it up to them, but at the very least, it will give you all the information that I wanted to give you from the start about this prosthetic. It's the whole reason why I contacted them to send me one, because I've tried a lot of prosthetics, I've wasted a lot of money, and I've just been disappointed every time. So I wanted to have this product to show you, to test out over a longer period, and to find out if it's really worth the investment, and to give you that information so that you don't continue to needlessly spend money with this trial and error, you know? So that's it. I just really felt like I needed to say that before I make this review video. So without further ado, here is my review for the Real Magic STP. So before we get into this, of course, I am about to show a prosthetic penis on screen. So if that is something you are uncomfortable with, I suggest clicking away now. So I received the Real Magic Uncut STP prosthetic. The color that I got is M7. It looks a little dark for my skin on camera, but when it's down where my genitals are, it does blend in quite well. I would probably, if I had to change anything about the color, maybe get one that's a little more yellow because I do have a kind of yellowish skin tone, but otherwise it blends in really well. Like you, you wouldn't really know, especially when it's down there. The Real Magic STP comes with the floating testicles. So there are little prosthetic testicles inside here in probably some kind of silicone jelly. And they move around really realistically. I actually prefer the way that these feel over the way that my pack and play feels. Maybe it might just be because of the prosthetic I received. Each one's created uniquely, so they aren't always exactly the same, but I like the way that these feel. It's my favorite part. The way that this is meant to be worn is with an adhesive on the back. You're supposed to put their adhesive, I would suggest the extra strength adhesive, on the back tab here, much like the pack and play, and it's supposed to just hang there and stay on you all day. If you watch my pack and play review, you'll know that I am actually quite allergic to the prosthetic adhesive, so I can't really use it, and when I do, I use it quite sparingly. Either way, even if I weren't allergic, I'm just not a big fan of using adhesives on my body because I find that eventually the prosthetic kind of slips down. The adhesive never fully sets. It's always kind of a little wet or a little tacky. It doesn't get, like, hard. And if you're sweating and moving around a lot in the day, the prosthetic will kind of slide down eventually. The adhesive will be a bit exposed. It'll stick to your underwear. It'll stick to your pants. It's a lot for me, sensory-wise, so I'm just not a big fan, personally. So that was a bit of a setback for me. However, in terms of the STP actually functioning, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is the only STP that has ever worked for my body, ever. I could actually use this in public. I wouldn't stay at a urinal just because I'm a big baby and I'm scared to use the urinal, but in a stall for sure, standing up. <laughs> you could use this at a urinal seamlessly. It's just, I'm someone who likes to like, you know, dry myself off with a little toilet paper after. I'm just, I'm a very nervous peer. I don't want to just stand there not peeing because I'm putting too much pressure on myself because I'm taking too long to pee. Anyway, but you could definitely use this at a urinal by all means, go ahead. So if the adhesive doesn't work, then how do you wear it? Well, I'm glad you asked, Aaron. There are two main ways that I like to wear this prosthetic. The first way is I actually like using a jock strap, as you know by now, but otherwise I've actually found that they make underwear for cis men that have pouches on the front, like a full pouch. Look at this. It's usually like sports underwear, because I guess people don't like when their balls wrap up against their body, which is a fair thing to not enjoy the sensation of. But this actually fits quite nicely inside these underwear. There are other underwear you can get that have a pouch on the front. These aren't the only pair, but these here are the brand called Obviously. I got them in one of my underwear expert boxes. And if not, 
literally a jock strap will do the trick just fine. It works really, really well. If you get a jock strap with a nice thick elastic band at the top that doesn't roll and doesn't squeeze and that just fits well on your body, it cups it perfectly. This fits against your body right where it's supposed to be. And when you do need to use a prosthetic, you could just sort of poke it out of the side, pee, and then readjust your harness or your jock strap, whatever you're using really. And if you use the silicone adhesive, honestly, as long as you're wearing a snug enough pair of boxers, it does work. I've used this with the adhesive. I just, again, sensory-wise, was not a huge fan, especially if you're gonna be wearing it for a long time. I find it kind of uncomfortable, and it does irritate my skin quite a bit to be putting it on and taking it off every day. So let me show you how this fits in your pants. So right now, I'm actually wearing Saks underwear, and these particular Saks, I have another pair here, don't have a full pouch on the inside. However, they do have this little net here, and it's meant to, like, separate the balls from the legs so that your balls don't stick to your leg. However, that works quite well with this prosthetic, honestly. Even though it's not a full pouch, it's enough. It's enough to give you support so you can move around. I wouldn't really do any vigorous activity unless you also have the adhesive on, but I find that the Saks underwear with the little flaps are a pretty good option. It gives you just enough support that if the adhesive slips a bit, it's not just gonna go flying. It holds it up and it doesn't put so much stress on the adhesive tab. Um, so yeah, this is what it looks like in your underwear. I find it subtle enough. I don't feel like it sticks out really. It is quite stiff. It's not gonna be as soft as using um, their soft regular packer. But honestly, like again, I don't feel like that sticks out too much. I feel like that falls nicely in the pants. My only issue is when you bend down, especially if you're not wearing that adhesive, it stays stiff. So you bend and it doesn't really like bend with your body. But as long as you're wearing a tight enough pair of underwear or if you're wearing pants, it won't really matter about the bending thing. It does hold it in place a bit better, especially if they're like snug pants. But yeah, if I were just packing like this without an adhesive, I would probably either wear tighter boxers or I would put a jock strap on over it just because if I need to move around a lot or if I need to run very suddenly, it doesn't feel that secure without the adhesive. With the adhesive, this is perfect. It's a perfect way to pack. I don't have any issues with it, but then I have issues with the adhesive itself. Sorry for how revealing this is, but this is with a regular jock strap. Now this, I feel quite confident with. It feels like I could really move around with this and I'm not really gonna have an issue. It might just be because I'm wearing a tighter jock strap. It's more snug. If your jock strap is loose, then obviously your prosthetic is looser. But again, this with an adhesive, that's like pretty in place in my experience, at least. You could wear just a jock strap under your pants if you want to. I'm not a fan of that, so I like to put a pair of boxers on over the jock strap, but that might be bulky to some folk. Some people might not like it, but this, this feels very secure. I like this. I feel like there's a lot of room for activities. Then once you have your pants on, it's good. I feel it falls comfortably and naturally. I don't feel like it's too obvious or anything like that. However, if you were going to be using this at a urinal with a jock strap, I would suggest at least wearing a pair of pants that opens at the front. These specific pair of Saks underwear do not have an opening at the front, but I have other pairs that do. And this is because it's a little hard to get the shaft out of two pair of underwear, but I mean, if you're alone in a stall, you could pull your first set of boxers down and then you could just pull the shaft out of the side of the jock strap and just make sure everything's in place and you could still go pee like this without having to pull your pants all the way down and without having to wear a pair of boxers that has an opening on the front. But again, the opening will make it quite a bit easier to do. But like you could see, it's not impossible. You could also wear it with these kind of underwear that have a full pouch on the front, like this brand here that I had gotten from Underwear Expert. The way that I do it is I place the balls and the shaft in the pocket, but I leave the little back lip out. I'll show you what I mean later. And without pants on, it does kind of stick out, again, because it's meant to separate all of the genitals from the body, but this is a solid way, if you don't want to have to wear a jock strap with underwear, this, in my opinion, is a solid way to wear it without worrying that it's gonna fall off. You could like swing around, shake your hips, and it's not gonna, as you can see, it's not gonna go anywhere. It just swings naturally and you're good. The important thing is to make sure that it's set low enough that the cup underneath rests between your legs and that it's not too far front. This is both so that you could actually use it when urinating, but also so that it doesn't stick out like this, you know? If it's nestled between your legs properly, then it fits a lot more naturally. And again, I'm a big fan of packing this way because it doesn't require me wearing an adhesive or wearing a jock strap. I don't know if I would necessarily pack this way while I'm doing sports, let's say, because I don't know how it would work with super rigorous activity, but I would be pretty confident in this there you go. It does stick out a little more than it does in the jock strap. That's because these underwear are literally separating it away from my body, so it's a little further. 
from my body, but I don't think it's so much that it looks unnatural. I think it's still subtle enough. So those are the ways in which you could pack with the Real Magic STP, or at least those are my favorite ways to pack with the Real Magic STP, given that the silicone adhesive is not really an option for me, especially not on a daily basis. So those are some packing alternatives. Now, in terms of how well this works, as I've said, this is the only prosthetic that has ever worked for me. It's for a number of reasons. The shape of it is really shaped to your anatomy, in my opinion. Obviously, trigger warning, anatomy. Not only this way does it fit well to your body, but this way too. This little point that it comes to here, where your anatomy meets, because you know there are two sides to your anatomy and a little space between, this fills that space. So there are no leaks that happen. It doesn't leak backwards and it can't leak frontward because I mean look at all this coverage you have. So it really does actually create a seal. It's not like all those other STPs that say they're gonna create a seal, but then like it doesn't actually seal. You have to like wiggle it around and like pray that it doesn't leak. This one really doesn't leak. I've never had an accident with this prosthetic. My only issue is sometimes I have trouble peeing standing up because my body is like, what are you doing? We're not sitting. So without getting naked, let me show you how it fits the anatomy. So like I said, this here fits your body this way. It perfectly scoops under you. This little point here, like I said, goes between your anatomy. I'm trying not to use words that'll trigger people, but you know what I'm talking about. It goes between that, creates a seal. And sometimes if I want to be super sure, I'll just like, when I'm holding the shaft out, I'll push down on the balls to make sure that it really won't leak. And then you just go. There is no like spread your legs and like squat a bit and like wiggle. Like it's literally just make sure it's pressed up against your body and pee. That's it. That's all. That's all you have to do. <laughs> now, not everyone has bathroom dysphoria and that's totally fine. However, I personally am someone who experiences a lot of bathroom dysphoria to the point where sometimes I just won't go when I'm in public. And even when I'm at home, I get really dysphoric peeing. So I'll try to like not go until I really have to, which isn't a good idea because you could get a UTI from holding in your urine. Please don't do what I do. But this helps. This helps a lot. Before getting this prosthetic, I would never have gone camping, for example. I wouldn't even go on like a long walk on a trail where there are no bathrooms. I cannot just go <laughs> out in public. But because of this, I could go when I'm outside. I could go when I'm in public. I could go anywhere. And that gives me a lot of liberation, I guess, and feeling of safety because I'm always afraid that like someone is going to catch me and find out and I don't know, the world is a scary place. So this makes me feel safer being in places where I know there won't be a bathroom because I could pee against a tree. I'm not saying that it's super duper duper easy to use. Every single STP is going to be difficult to use in my opinion because there is still a detachment between your anatomy and this product. It isn't a part of you. So when you're walking, you're gonna feel it. You have to adjust it. When you bend down, you're gonna feel it. Like I said, there's a learning curve with everything. I've never had any spills with this, but what I mean, when you pee, there might be some urine left here. So you're going to want to make sure that all the urine is out, which is why I prefer to use a stall because I like to like go in there with a little piece of toilet paper, dry myself off, dry the prosthetic off, make sure I don't get a UTI because I always get UTIs. I like to make sure everything is really clean. There's the sensory issue of using a prosthetic like this and not being able to immediately wash it. That bothers me. In my mind, I immediately feel like it needs to be washed. I'm very particular about cleanliness and bacteria and stuff, so that's a bit hard for me to get around. In terms of sensation, like I said, for me, I have to make sure that there's no dampness left, so just using it, shaking it, and putting it back in my pants is not something that's easy for me. It's something that required some work. I had to adapt to that. No matter what, using something that's not actually attached to my body adds a layer of difficulty to an otherwise easy process physically. Emotionally, this makes it easier. This facilitates an otherwise very stressful and difficult process, but physically it adds a couple of steps, a little bit of adjustment, things to work around, you know? So if you could afford this product and you are looking for an STP and you're gonna spend like $300 on one anyway, I would say save up a little longer and get this because I've tried the EZP. I've tried literally almost all prosthetics because a friend of mine used to get prosthetics and I used to get to try them, but none of them have ever worked for me, except this one. However, is it worth the price to just be able to stand to pee if you don't have a ton of dysphoria surrounding it? That's up to you. I can't make that decision for you. If you're someone who likes camping or hiking or any other outdoor activity that involves not having access to sit-down restrooms, this might be a really good investment for you. But there are other things you could use. Trigger warning for the name of this product. I've heard really good things about the Go Girl. Before using this prosthetic, I actually didn't have too much trouble using a Mr. Phoenix. Sometimes it was still a bit of a mixed experience. It depends, I would only use it in my house, but that's one that with enough practice would have been good for me, but you can't pack with that. You also can't pack with the Go Girl. And those are the only products I've ever seen that have a similar shape to this. So, so it's not the only way that you could pee standing up, but in terms of the um, packing STPs, the STPs that look like 
penises. This is the only one I've seen that actually fits the anatomy and isn't flimsy. This is like, this is hard. This isn't gonna bend when you press it up against your body. Like I've tried the peacock and it's like just, as soon as you press it up against your body, it caves and there's no point in the shape of it if it doesn't hold its shape. So the stiffness, I don't mind. As you saw, it fits in your pants quite well anyway. I find that the stiffness is actually what makes this such an effective product because it's not only about the shape, but about its ability to hold the shape. And yeah, in terms of whether or not it's worth the money, that's up to you. Only you could decide that, but I, I do find this quite pricey. I never would have been able to afford this on my own. The only reason I have this product is because it was sent to me by Real Magic, and unfortunately, I don't know if they will ever send me another product again. But I'm glad I had this opportunity nonetheless to review this product and show you this product and give you my opinion on it, and for that, I'm very grateful. That's it. Let me know what you think of this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week, and you take care of yourselves. All right, thanks.